Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to another podcast. I hope you enjoyed the last one. We're going to do another one, new, brand new one, brand new topic, brand new topic, brand new podcast show. I'm your host, or the uh, the guest, or the host, whatever the case may be, aka Dave Nation. Yes, of all Dave Nations. That's right, that's right. Yes, sooner or later I'll have my own webpage, my own dedicated webpage. Yes, very soon, in the near distant future. Until then, I'm going to do a podcast, and uh, my future's going to look bright. I've got to watch, i got to wear these you-know-what shades things. All right, but anyway, nonetheless, I just want to do a podcast again, but this time, only this time, I'm going to do a podcast about uh, one person in particular uh, in this world of ours, in this lovely world of ours, is some singers out there in the world. Now, now I don't know if you people know this any anytime soon. Uh, I'm gonna mention his name. Uh, he was he was he did music uh, for a while there in the early '80s and '90s, and uh, just recently, he, he made a trumpet return to the music industry again. He goes by the name of Corey Hart, and a lot of people should know in the Canadian music industry. He goes by the name of Corey Hart. One of his songs that you should know about him is Wear My Sunglasses at Night. And he did a video about it, a music video about it, back in the early 80s and so. Um, I followed his career quite quite, uh, quite closely. Now, in those days, you didn't have uh, the internet uh, at your disposal. You didn't have tweets, YouTube things, and going like that. Uh, but today, in this day and age, you have YouTube to thank for. Um, yeah, Corey Hart, who once had a couple of albums... First album was, uh, the album was called First Defense on the album. Very first one. Album. Second one was Boy in the Box album. Third one, I, th- I forget what the third one was. But anyway, I didn't follow his career very much. But he had several albums out there in the world. Um, and now he just came out, he's going to do a world tour. He's going to do a world tour very soon, folks. Very very much, very soon. He's been doing a uh, concert lately. I mean, a while back. And uh, he's a great singer. He's been, uh, he try. He does his old songs from way, way back to up till now. Um, and he puts on a good show. Puts on a really rock and roll show out there. And Corey Hardy, he's just, he's going to go on a worldwide tour. I think that's what he's going to do. I don't know for sure. Don't quote me on that, guys. But, uh... Yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. He's 80s kind of singer. Blast from the past, I would say. And, uh, yeah. So, look out for him. He's going to be Corey Hart, and he's going to do a world tour around the world. Um, he's going to do his big rock and roll thing. And Corey Hart, I fell in love with him in the early 80s, in the mid-80s, uh, 1985 to 1984, around that time frame. Um, he had a couple of songs, and he just... He was out. Uh, he was out of the gate early on those songs. Really, you know, to his uh, his uh, music uh, people out there, and yeah. So anyway, look out for him for the next uh, year or so. He's gonna do a. He's gonna plan on doing a world tour. I'm hoping he is. That'd be great. Very much great. Uh, just like the other ones before him. Uh, you had the Corey Hearts to the uh, Gowans to the Glass Tigers of the world. To um, just the box, the group box. It was a French group, French rock group. Um, oh, many songs. Uh, there's a tons of. There was tons of them in the early '80s. I mean, everybody, everybody was competing into the uh, to the worldwide stage of their rock and roll life, and everybody was on the bandwagon. Everybody said, "Hey, we're going to be a rock singer. Get our buddies in a rock band. We're going to throw out some tunes and hope they, you know." do some recordings of it and uh, yeah so look out for Corey Hart his tour starts this year hope you enjoyed it hope you enjoyed my podcast this is the only podcast I'm going to do about Corey Hart I dropped some names on this one um, and yeah Corey Hart he's a guy who did early 80's music and up till now he's done tons of songs tons of songs I could mention here um, he did a song called I'm By Your Side he did uh uh, Dancing with My Mirror. I don't know if you guys know that song. Um, and he did a few songs. He did Originize. He did 
uh, all these songs. He did the Boy in the Box song. He did Never Surrender. He did Never Wear My Sunglasses at Night. There was tons of songs that you could have liked to this guy. Uh, I Am By Your Side song. There's a music video out there on YouTube about that one. Uh, early 80s, I mean, <laughs> essentially, he, he ruled the rock, uh, Canadian rock and roll history. Um, and he had a couple of good songs out there. I mean, really. And I was, I was just uh, fascinated about his music industry. Uh, Corey Hart, who uh, is going to go a worldwide tour. Thank God for that. We give blessings to him uh, for doing that. Uh, Corey Hart, he's a... Uh, he, he, I think uh, he speaks a little French, I think. I'm pretty sure. And, uh, yeah, I'm not immune to that. And I'm just saying Corey Hart is the, the ultimate singer of a Canadian singer. And a lot of people think that one of his songs, his very famous song, was the Sunglasses at Night song. I concur with that, too, as well. But his most songs were other albums that he put out. He put the uh, uh, album called Bang, I think it was called. Um... And he did tons of songs, tons of songs. I forget what the, I think it was on the third album, I think. I think he came out with the third album. I'm not too sure on that one. Um, and he had a couple, a couple of drummers. He, and he, he did uh, not just his original drummer, he did many drummers for his songs. He did a drummer, I think, from a uh, uh, John Cougar Mellencamp drummer. And, uh, yeah, so he had really good uh, years. I mean, really good years. And, uh, yeah, I really like the guy. I really do appreciate his music uh, career and his, uh, his craft. Um, you know, he was a singer-songwriter and did all the songs for his, uh, his uh, you know, his fan base, essentially. And, uh, yeah, and I want to leave you with this. Go, way to go, Corey Hart. I know you're going to do good in the world stage because I know you've been around for 30-plus years and still going strong to this day. I, I never knew he's still alive. Um... But yeah, he's doing his thing, he's doing his thing, and I appreciate that, you know, as a singer songwriter, I appreciate that, uh, you know, out there in the world doing his doing his thing. And uh, <laughs> as I always say to singers, they're doing their thing, you know, doing their music career. And it's not always for money. Remember that, it's not always for money, people. Bear that in mind, it's not always for money. Uh, they're just doing it for their fans, you know. If they're doing it for the fans, that's good. Sometimes they do a big charity event, big musical event like the Live Aid concerts to the, um, it's just the charity concerts that they do sometimes. Uh, which is really good because it pours in a lot of money. It's not always for the ticket sales they get, it's always for the charity that they get. And they do musical events like the Live Aid concerts. Did you, did you people know this, that it's been 30, almost close to 33 years of the live first very first live a concert from 1985 big juggernaugger of a of a live concert it was who is who kind of thing who's going to be on that bill and this was just a charity event because the Ethiopia if I can remember uh, with, Bo uh, with Bob Gildoff is, is the name uh, Bob Gildoff wanted to do a live concert to uh, help out the Philippines people and it, uh, they broadcast the very first live concert filmed around the world. Not, uh, well, at the event, uh, uh, Wembley Stadium, and I think at Philadelphia, if I remember now. Um, so they did two, you know, how do they do it uh, in sync with both, uh, but uh, both are doing the uh, charity thing, the charity concert event. Um, but Bob Gildoff was the guy to get it all started. He was the uh, front runner for this charity thing. 1985 was the who is who in the rock industry, music industry. Um, a long list of them were going to be at this charity concert venue. Yeah, this is uh, who is who. Many, many to listen. That, who was there at the fir very first concert was... Uh, Nick Kershaw, I don't know if you people know that singer, um, uh, to um, Spend Out Ballet, to, um, you know, just a few names. Just the, uh, who is who is going to be on the billing of the rock concert. And to Dire Straits, I know a few people know that, so, that name. Dire Straits, who did Money for Nothing, and to uh, Walk of Life, and to everything, I mean... 
And uh, today, you, you, can you imagine hearing those songs today in 2019? I'm just hearing this in my head now. Can you imagine if those songs were played on TV shows and radio programs? Can you imagine? It would still be good. I think Dire Straits is... You know, hit it out of the ballpark with his uh, his album, uh, with uh, what's it called, the uh, Brothers in Arms album, that sold millions. Not no no joke in there. Uh, that sold. They called many units. How many albums sales came out of it? Um, and uh, yeah, he did pretty good in his <laughs> luscious career. Uh, it just it, it, it these songs stay a test of time. You know, after all these years. The songs are still originate to this day. I mean, when I hear Dire Straits' album, I was just hearing like almost uh, a year ago, and I was just listening to it, and thinking to myself, "Wow, this music is pretty good." I, I, you know, because of my special CD player, but it sounds really good. It sounds like you know it, it could be played in this day and age in 2019. Uh, but yeah, when they went in the recording studios, they never thought that those albums would ever become you know. Uh, uh, a money a money maker kind of album, uh, but yeah, sell many units. They call it in the music industry. Sell many units, many albums later, and they get paid for it. The they get paid for doing because they're a singer songwriter and they're artist. They call themselves an artist. And uh, yeah, so the uh, the live Aid concert was just a charity event, big huge concert of a charity event. And you're supposed to give money to charity. This concert was going, the money was going to go towards charity. And that's what they're, they're, they're basically uh, giving their free time to do a charity event. And it, at the time, in the 1985, it was, I think it was July of 13, July 13, uh, 1985, 33 years ago. Can you believe it's been 33 years ago that that concert first happened? I'm still, still, I'm still stunned. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it was beamed around the world, worldwide through satellite dishes. Uh, much music aired the, from here in Canada in uh, Wembley Stadium to uh, to I think uh, Philadelphia Stadium. I forget what the name was, um, but it was the, from the who's who was going to be there at the charity concert venue um, to the rock singers uh, at that time. Um, and Bob Gilnard was going to be there. Queen, the group Queen, was going to be there. The rock and roll Queen group uh, with uh, Fred Mercury. Uh, he passed away in uh, 1991 to, to, to the AIDS. That was the, uh, that he passed away. But, you know, and uh, yeah, so years later, uh, the, group, the, uh, rock, uh, the, the original band members are still around. But it's just uh, Freddie Mercury passed away. And, uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's terrible. That's terrible. That's honestly terrible. But a few rock singers have come and gone and do their thing to the world. They tribute to, to the music industry. And um, they accomplished a lot. They accomplished a lot for their fan base, their big stadium fan base. And uh, these stadiums hold billions and billions of people. I mean, billions of people. Not just little people in a big, small venues. Uh, but bigger venues. Once they once they become famous, they go to big arenas, big giant arenas that fill lot tons of people, tons of people in those arenas. And uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's all good all around once you do these big charity juggernugger kind of thing. And uh, you just do a charity event, do a concert, a rock concert charity event, and the money will go towards the charity event of their choosing kind of thing. Um, and the rock, uh, they, they, essentially the rock singers give up their time to do a big free, uh, charity event. And the money goes to some charity event, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, it's been 33 years ago, this year, if I got my, if I got my years right, uh, that, uh, 1985, around July of, uh, of 13, uh, these were the who was who was going to be there of rock singers of the day. And uh, Lana Ritchie was there. Michael Jackson wasn't there. Uh, he was off the bill. He didn't contribute to the uh, uh, to the rock concert. He never did on the first one or the second one. Um, for f an unknown reason. I don't know why. But, uh, but besides Michael Jackson, everybody was there. Uh, there's a few people that, uh, you know, did their thing, put the music out there for a big charity event, 
And it was good. It was good. A lot of people were there at the time. The and uh, I watched it as well as other people watched it because it was live at the time. It's the first time ever uh, uh, from this uh, from over here in Canada. They beamed the uh, the concerts that they had in uh, Wembley Stadium to the uh, Philadelphia Stadiums. Uh, beamed their concert. Uh, they're con uh, going live. Now, remember, at the time, it's 1985. Bear this in mind, this was 1985. So the technology they had in 95, I don't know if it was stereo or mono or um, how good the uh, the uh, sound of the quality was. Um, they did have a bit... Uh, uh, sometimes their equipment wouldn't work that great. They had mic problems. They would have... Uh, team uh, would go off. They wouldn't have very... It was 1985-ish kind of thing. So you might have, they didn't have like a practice on the stadium because uh, they're using microphones to amplify their voice to the uh, speakers and to the TV uh, stations. And yeah, big live. <laughs> I can't believe it's been 33 years ago that happened. In 1985, of July of 1985. And two stadiums were going to be the vocal point of this big huge concert, a uh, charity concert. And uh, much music aired it from there, from here in Canada, because uh, they beamed the signal to much music, and then the people around Canada would see it. And, and it was a worldwide event, essentially. Every, uh, and those days, remember, this was '85. Or bear that in mind. It was '85. This concert happened. Um, now you didn't have tweets or anything to tweet out and say, hey, this concert was great in 85. Could you imagine, go back in Time Machine and say, hey, we want to go back in 1985 and see if we could tweet out to that concert. Be like a time traveler kind of guy. And so that, you know, still Bob Gildoff was the, the front guy of this whole, uh, you know, uh, charity, big rock concert charity event thing. And he's still around to this day, as far as I know. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, it was his, you know, two concerts he did, 1985 to 2005, so yeah, both, but never did the third one, so, hopefully, we'll see the next one, bye everybody, see, appreciate the podcast, bye.